Hey, this is Russ. I just wanted to give you another case. Um, as you know, I worked in law enforcement many, many years ago, but these things are still kind of part of me. And so I do like talking about it, but I've never put anything like this on video. So um, I thought more and more about it. And I said, really, should I be talking about these cases or not? But these are so old of cases now that I think we can. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. So um, I wanted to talk to you about suicide. All right. And I've been to a couple of suicide cases. Um, the first one was a young boy who had uh, committed suicide in the backyard of a neighbor's home. We got called out and um, it was a gunshot wound. Um, and I think a lot of times when this happens, you know, it's sad um, when someone takes their own life. I mean, it's sad when someone kills you too. But, you know, when you're taking your own life, you, you leave, um, you know, you leave this world, but you leave those who love you. Uh, they have to deal with it afterwards too. It's it's not a good thing. Hey, you know if you if you have anything in terms of thinking of suicide or anything, definitely call the suicide prevention line. And maybe they can help you. Now the second case um, that happened uh, shortly after that, and both of these cases are are when I was working in the San Diego Police Department. Um, we got a call um, late in the evening. I remember this specifically. And uh, the evidence tech who was training me at the time, um, yeah, I really miss her, quite frankly. She was one of my my uh, mentors at the time. And uh, she, I remember she called me up and says, Russ, do you want to go to a homicide? And I said, uh, absolutely. So we went out there together and... Um, she did things that I I wasn't expecting, quite frankly. Um, we were changing in the the crime scene van, and she put she put on what she calls her homicide shoes. And I said, "Really, you you have shoes specifically for homicide?" And she goes, "Yes." She says, "You know, we step around things, and I don't want to be bringing that back into my home." <laughs> And uh, sometimes we have little uh, shoe covers too, you know, because you, you could be stepping in things that you'd really don't want to be stepping in. So she put the shoe covers on as well. And she, uh, she said a little prayer inside the crime scene van before we went and processed the scene. Now, she knew that I was a Christian as well. And so we, we prayed for, uh, you know, for help to process the scene and also for, for the victims. Um, so we went there, and it was the bloodiest crime scene I had ever seen in my life. Uh, the, um, the, 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 the scene happened inside a utility room. Every time I think of utility rooms, I think of this now. And uh, it was a mother who um, went after her son, um, and I think she wanted to also kill the husband, but the husband ran out of the house seeking help but uh, left the son behind. The son just had a, a birthday, too. I think he just turned six years old uh, a week, maybe less than a week ago, something like that, before he, he was murdered by his mom. And so she cut his throat and then later cut her own as well. Um, and so by the time we got there, um, blood is spattered all over the walls of the utility room and all over the floor. I mean, there's there was no way of getting around this without stepping in the blood. So I knew immediately when she said, you know, sometimes you need those shoes and you need, you know, the little little booty things to, on top of your shoes because you don't know what you're stepping in. So uh, we worked this scene um, and it, it was uh, hours we were there. And uh, because this is now getting into the late of the night, uh, I still had, you know, classes to attend the next day. So I left early. Uh, I didn't finish the scene with her because uh, I, I seen all the things I needed to see. And uh, she's doing all the, the, the work, obviously, because she's the main evidence tech on the, on the case. So she says, go ahead, go home, get, get some rest and go to school the next day. So the thing is, is, you know, a lot of times we get called out. It's, it is in the evening hours and um, it could run throughout the entire evening. And, and, you know, the other crime scenes I'd worked on, uh, you know, you, you go to bed and then you get a call at one or two in the morning. And, that, and in those days, too, we use pagers, right? We'd get a pager uh, call, and on the numeric thing, you'd see 187. And in California, PC 187 is, is homicide. 
So we knew immediately what to do. I, I'd get up, I'd make a phone call and make my arrangements and meet them at the police department because I, I can't drive my own car to the crime scene. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Uh, and then they would, uh, they would drive me to, to the thing. But again, to, to leave early, uh, we'd have to get a, a, a police car and then he would drive me back to the police department. I'd get back in my vehicle, go home. And, um, you know, you're, you're oftentimes you're talking three, four in the morning and, and, you know, you got classes to take that start at eight in the morning. So I was always sleep deprived. There was no doubt. I was sleep deprived while I was training and also interning at the police department. So um, these two crime scenes um, stick in my mind all the time, more so really with the, with the bloodiest scene I'd ever seen. Interestingly enough, too, uh, I had heard later that uh, I believe the husband wanted to sue the police department for not moving in quicker to save the, the, the wife and, and the, uh, the son. Well, uh, well, he actually ran out of the house to look for help. He could have taken the son with. <laughs> I don't know, but... I don't think that's something you can sue the police department for. You know, they they sent the uh, SWAT team out. You know, she was still alive at the time, and and then uh, later on, that you know, she had killed them, uh, killed her, killed her son, killed herself uh, before the SWAT team actually moved in. The SWAT team does not just jump into the crime scene. Um, they use mirrors and everything to look around corners. They don't just jump in. Um, they have to evaluate what they have before they go in there. And, he, and he, I guess he claimed that they didn't move in quick enough, but. I don't think he got anywhere with that with that case, <laughs> trying to sue the police department for not moving in fast enough to stop it. Anyways, um, these things happen, and I, I, re- I remember another case too. Um, yeah, I'll I'll talk about that case too. I didn't work that case, but my supervisor did, and um, it is one of the largest mass murders in the United States. In fact, it was the largest at that time. I believe it was twenty eight victims. Uh, who were murdered in San Ysidro, California, at, at a McDonald's. I'll talk about that on the next crime scene case that we talk on here on YouTube. So anyways, if you like this uh, story and you'd like to hear more stories from me, uh, just go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, because that'll tell you when new videos from me come out. I'll talk to you guys next time.